Welcome to another exciting edition of our interview segment. Of course, today we will be speaking with distinguished Senator Mohamed Bima Enegi. Senator Mohamed Bima Enegi is representing Nanji South Senatorial District, Nanji State. You're welcome to our program. You are welcome. What is the experience like being the Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and being addressed as a Senator? Uh, thank you for that wonderful question. It's a great privilege, a great honor for somebody, for one, to be a senator, to be given the responsibility to serve my people, to be given the responsibility to make and review laws for the country, for the development of the country, for the welfare of the people, for the security of the people. It's a great responsibility. And what I say every day to myself is to pray to God for God's guidance because that is the ultimate. Once God is with you, every other thing will fall in place. I am humbled by being called a senator. Uh, it's a, uh, there are so many Nigerians that could occupy that position, but God decided to give it to me, and I praise God for that. What are the major challenges you have faced on the job so far? The challenges we have, not just me, any senator, it's uh, from various sectors. I would say we have moral responsibility, moral challenges, social challenges, economic challenges. We have so many. In the area of a, um, a moral challenge, the, whatever we do, we need to be accountable to the people. We need to think about the welfare of the people. We need to think of what will improve the socioeconomic uh, uh, activities in the country. So it's a big responsibility. It's a very big challenge. And I just, I just pray to God every day. For, from the economic side, uh, let me say the financial side, everybody thinks that uh, uh, as a senator, you have a lot of money, you make a lot of money, and the poverty level in the society is high. Everybody expects you to bring money, and it's not easy. And what I tell myself, and what my people, there's an adage in my, in my place, that it's better to teach one how to fish than to give the person fish to eat. And that is my goal. My aim is not to give people money, but to create means for people to make money. And that places a lot of burden on me, because people do not easily understand. And again, from the moral side, people think every politician is a liar, what you say, you don't mean it. You are corrupt. You have a lot of money. You know, so it's, 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 it's a very big challenge. But uh, I thank God. People are beginning to understand. And I continue to pray to God that they will understand and they will change their perception about some of these issues. What areas of lawmaking body do you think the Senate have excelled? And which area do you think more jobs need to be done? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Because one of the uh, first responsibilities of the National Assembly is to make laws. And uh, uh, I think in this area, so far, the Ninth Senate has done quite well. We have done uh, uh, very well, let me say so. When you are aware that uh, for the past 20 years, the budget of the country does not get passed by the National Assembly. At times, it reaches even June, and uh, it uh, disorganizes the whole budget cycle. But now the ninth uh, Senate has been able, the ninth National Assembly has been able to pass the budget in record time in December and assented to by Mr. President. I think that is a very big, uh, I mean, a very big achievement. That now the budget cycle is going to run from January to December. And I can tell you, with this ninth uh, National Assembly, this is what we, sh we shall continue to do for the next four years. We'll ensure that the budget is passed in good time and we'll impress it upon the, the executive arm of government to assent to it in good time so that investors will be able to plan, government will be able to implement policies and programs in good time. I think that is a very big, a very big achievement. As a quantity surveyor, another area that I think the, the National Assembly has done very well is the area of the uh, Public Procurement Act. The Public Procurement Act 2007 has been reviewed by and amended by the National Assembly and we have passed it to the presidency for his signature. And once that is done, 
I think why it will reduce the level of corruption in the country. It will improve the procurement process in the country. And I think that is very important because procurement, most of the corruption cases that you have in the country is through procurement. And we have amended that law. And if that law is assented to by Mr. President and properly implemented, things shall change in this country for better. Would you like to see a better implementation of the national budget in the future? Yes, that's just what I've just, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, try to address. Uh, you know, budget implementation is very important for our socioeconomic development in the country. And uh, the, I, we'll continue to improve. I believe if uh, the national income, the revenue of government improves, and there's proper implementation, proper releases of budget to the various uh, MDEs, I think it will be better for the country. There will be better uh, our development. Critics of the Ninth Senate believe that the National Assembly, by extension, the Senate is behaving as if it is an arm of the ex executive arm of government. That the senator only rubber stamp what the executive puts forward for, to them without applying the checks and balances to the ex executive arm of government as stipulated by the Constitution. What is your take on that? Uh, thank you for this question. I'm actually surprised. I get surprised when people say this. We say federal government of Nigeria. When they say the government of Nigeria, it's not only the executive arm of government. It's not the legislative arm of government. It's not the judiciary. It's the three arms of government together. And we must work. We must collaborate. There must be synergy. There must be cooperation between us. There must be coordination in our activities. We are not rubber stamping any policy of government. We are doing the right thing. We are all aiming to improve the welfare of our people, the security of our people, the socioeconomic development of our land, of our communities. That is what the executive arm government is doing. That is what the judiciary is, is all about. That is what the uh, the legislative arm is all about. So we have to work together. We have to cooperate. We have to collaborate. There must be synergy in our activities. And I think that is what this government is doing. And I can tell you that when we start our oversight functions, we are going to be thorough. We are not going there to just look at what they are doing. We are going to look, to look for areas of gaps, areas of, uh, of, of, of lacuna, so that we will advise the relevant agencies, the relevant, the relevant arms of the, the, the executive arms of government on how to improve in their activities. So we are not rubber stamping any program of government. We are doing the right thing because we are all aiming for one thing, to improve the security, the welfare, the development of our land, of our community, of our people. A lot of stakeholders have expressed their opinion on which geopolitical zone should produce the next president in 2023. I think the media is just making uh, a noise about this zoning system. Virtually all the major parties in the country have this zoning arrangement. And I don't think any of the parties will... We throw it away. Because you throw it away, <laughs> you are playing with your chances. I don't think my party, the APC, will throw that zoning policy away. We must, we must do it. I believe in, I believe in zoning. I believe in the zoning policy. It is good for peace. It is good for unity. It is good for development. Nigeria has not reached a stage where we will, and, and I also believe that every geopolitical zone in this country has quality people, have good people that can lead this country. So wherever it is zoned to, I believe good people will come out to lead the government of this country. I believe in the zoning system. It's, very, it's a very good arrangement, and I encourage my party and all parties in Nigeria to try to adhere to it. It's good for the unity. Some former governors and um, the letters being Senator Oji Uzokalo are serving different terms in jail for corruption. What lesson can you draw from their experience and what advice will you give to the public office holders and those who seek the, to hold the public trust? I don't know what you want me to say, but I'll tell you one thing. Corruption is not good for any society for any society, for any community. I remember what Mr. President said, that if in this country we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. We are in this 
deplorable state in this country because of corruption. God has blessed this country. We have land. We have fertile land. We have intelligent people. We have everything. We have solid minerals. We, whatever you want to think of, God has blessed us with it. But we are still at this level. Many countries are doing far better than us. Many, even African countries are doing better than us. Why? Because of our level of corruption. We must kill corruption. So I want, I want to kill corruption. Not just former governors, former senators, even people along the streets, the touts in the, in the, in, in the motor parks. Everybody should, should eschew corruption. Corruption is not good for us. It's not good for any society. We must do all we can to kill corruption. And once the judicial process is fully followed, I don't have any qualms about it. I don't have any worries about it. Distinguished Senator, can you please tell us about a little about yourself? Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I mean, everything I do, I thank God Almighty. I've just told you my name. My name is Bima Muhammad Enagi. I'm a senator representing Niger South. I was born in a small village called Enagi. Uh, it's no longer a small village, it's a town now, because we have it in the Nigerian constitution as one of the local government headquarters. I attended primary school at Enagi, local, I mean LGA, uh, LEA primary school in those days. And from there, uh, with the blessing of God, I passed to King's College, Lagos, where I did very well. Uh, throughout my time, I was the best student from Form 1 to my Form 5. I was the best student, and Alhamdulillah, thank God, I was under Northwestern State Scholarship. But the school also gave me an honorary scholar, I mean, an honorary scholarship because of my academic, uh, uh, I mean, achievement. I was also a member of a football team, hockey team, high jump, long jump. I was, I was doing everything, and I thank God, whatever I put in front of me to do, God bless me with it. And from there, I went to ABU. I did quite well also. I passed out with, uh, with two one second class upper division. I was also in the uh, University of Lagos, where I did my MBA, and uh, also foot mina. I like I liked reading. So in foot mina, when I moved to the north from uh, Lagos, I... I did a postgraduate diploma in computer science. There, I worked in many places. I, after my youth service, I worked in over unique consultants where I, I really gathered a lot of experience because it was a consortium of all engineers in the built environment. We had engineers, we had architects, we had draftmen, we had quantity surveyors under the same roof. I really gained a lot of experience from there. And from there, I moved to First Bank as a project manager and project coordinator, and also secretary of the tenders board there. I did very well there while I was there. When I was leaving, nobody wanted me to leave, you know, but I just had to move forward, and uh, I went to Central Bank. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I left Central Bank as a director. When I was leaving too, they never wanted me to leave. The governor, the deputy governors, all of them said, no, where are you going? But I had to retire. I said I was entering politics. Alhamdulillah. I entered politics and uh, with the blessing of God, first shot, I made it. I, I thank God for it. And uh, I always tell myself that I, I, God has blessed me. I must give it back to my people. I must do everything I can to improve the welfare of my people. And I pray to God Almighty to guide my actions, to guide my speech, to guide my thoughts, so that I want Nigeria to change before I die. The way I see this country today, I'm not happy. And I know the present government is doing a lot, but the things have gone so bad, so bad. We need to take some drastic actions. Like this border, club, I mean border closure that the government did, to me, is one of the best policies of this government. We need to take very harsh decisions. It's like when you have a child and you have to circumcise the child. It's painful because the child goes through a lot of pain, but it's good for the child. We need to take more drastic actions to improve the life of our people in this country. And I pray to God that this government will be courageous enough, will be bold enough to take decisions that will change a lot of things. I'm not happy about the road situation in this country. Government must do something about the maintenance of our roads, the reconstruction of, of our roads. I don't want the four years of this present administration to pass. And this road situation 
I mean, I mean, remain the same. It will not work well for our party. It will not work well for anybody. He's dragging down the social, social economic activities in this country. I pray to God that things will change in my lifetime in this country. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you a very funny one here. How do you unwind? Uh, that's a very difficult question. But I can tell you my, my lifestyle. I, I play with my children a lot when I'm at home. I listen to news. I, I read books a lot. I read, I read a lot. I wake up every night to read. If I don't read Quran, I read uh, just to improve myself. And uh, that, at times I travel out. And uh, my, my young wife, when we go out, she, must, she takes me to places, you know. But uh, it's, I'm, a, I'm a serious-minded person, generally. Uh, but uh, it's okay, alhamdulillah. What advice do you have for the leaders of tomorrow? Um, that's a very tall question. I always tell my children three things to guide them in life. That's what I will always tell any youth. Three things. The first and the most important. Well, I will not say the most important, but the most important is the last. Is the, is the, is the last one I mentioned. The first is your character. Character is very important. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter the connections you have, no matter what you think you are, no matter how handsome, how beautiful, whatever you think you are, if you don't have good character, you have nothing. So character to me is number one. And I always tell my children, wherever you, wherever you are, please let character guide you. That is very important. The second is you must be hardworking. Whatever you put in front of you, you must look at the success. How do you get to the end? How do you succeed? It must be there. So you must work hard. Create a timetable for yourself. Follow it strictly so that you will achieve the result at, at the end of the day. That is second. And the third is put God first. Those are the three things I always tell my children. And that's what I always tell the youth. If you put all that, even what we are talking about, corruption will go away. Because if you fear God, you will not take what is not yours. If you have good character, you will not take what is not yours. If you are hardworking, whatever you put in front of you, you will want to succeed. And success is not just you. Success is a teamwork. You must get people around you to achieve results. So that's what I will always tell the youth. That's what I tell my children. And I think if every child, everybody, even if you're an adult, you put these three things in front of you, alhamdulillah, you will surely succeed. Yes.